Welcome back to the second update on the status of our 2014 Mazda CX-5 long-term tester. By now, we've put about 2,000 miles on the car, half of which I think I'm personally responsible for, testing it in the most thorough way you can for a crossover with a family on a weekend road trip. One of the things that surprised me most about the CX-5 isn't that it's sporty. I expected that from Mazda. What I do like is that it's actually a great family car. Fitting both my kids' child seats was easy, though I'll proudly boast I'm an expert at it, and they fit snugly. There's even a good amount of room, so while their little feet can still kick the seat backs, they don't have to. Cargo room is also plentiful at 34 cubic feet. Now, that's a little less than the Honda CR-V, but at three cubic feet difference, it's pretty much negligible. Those numbers are hard to wrap your head around, so I can tell you in the real world, it does hold a lot. If you have kids, you know that means even a weekend road trip brings with it an absurd amount of packing. You have to bring toys and their booster seats for eating, and they want their own pillows, and then there's bunny and bear and penguin and monkey, and well, you get the picture. The long drive also gave me a chance to test out the car's fuel economy. Rated at 24 miles per gallon city and 30 on the highway, I managed to get 28 miles per gallon without really paying any attention to what I was doing. Now, when I did pretty much set the cruise at 65 miles an hour and just head straight on the highway, it was straight on at 29 miles per gallon. Now, those numbers might not be quite as impressive as some of the digits you've seen advertised, but that's because this is the all-wheel drive model and we have the larger engine. It makes 184 horsepower and 185 foot-pounds of torque. And I'm happy to report that while the smaller 2.0-liter engine is just barely enough, even with one person in the car, the larger 2.5-liter is perfectly adequate, even when the car is fully loaded. Cruising along also gave me a chance to check out Mazda's blind spot monitoring system. And I have to say, I find it just a bit too sensitive. Uh, just cruising down a two-lane highway when I move out in the left lane to pass around somebody, every time I go to merge back in, I find that it's beeping off at me and just driving me nuts. And it's saying that I'm too close to the vehicle that's just behind me, but really I feel that it's a safe distance. Over time, I'm sure I would probably learn to adapt my driving style just so as not to drive myself nuts. But in the short term, instead with my kids sleeping in the back, I just push the button and turn it off because I really don't want to wake up those little monsters. So that's not a huge knock against the CX-5, but this is the transmission. Now, I've talked to Mazda engineers who will tell you how great this transmission is and how it shifts so fast and it's almost like a dual clutch, they say. But the reality is, most of the time, it doesn't want to shift. On our road trip, my wife, who, by the way, drives a Mazda 5 with a manual transmission, commented to me that the car feels like it's stuck in the wrong gear a lot of the times, and she's exactly right. The car doesn't want to drop gears, instead choosing to save on fuel, and other times it actually wants to gear up too quickly. And then when you do give it a light amount of throttle in normal driving, you'll find you just get this sort of vibration through the car and it just sort of sits on the tachometer and does not want to go up, and it's pretty frustrating. The feeling is a little less zoom-zoom and perhaps more Prius-like. In addition to driving cautiously with my family in the vehicle, I've also had a chance to test the CX-5 here at the AutoGuide test track. And I can tell you, I'm convinced it does have a true Mazda soul. If you don't believe me, well, you should check out our Audi RS5 video review. If that car looks fast in a lot of those shots, well, that's me driving the CX-5 with a camera shooting out the back. On top of all that, I have to say the CX-5 is one of the best looking compact crossovers on the market. Only the Hyundai Santa Fe comes close. Add on top of that, it's got a nice quality interior. I find the buttons and controls are quite easy to use. The only real downside is that transmission. And that's really not too big of a pill to swallow when you consider all the upsides of this car. Have a comment or better yet a question? Ask us anything you wanna know about the CX-5 on YouTube in our AutoGuide comment section or even tweet us at AutoGuide.